Good morning. Good morning. The third Sunday of Advent. It's a, always a special Sunday. It's called the Pink Sunday, so you know what candle's going to be lit? <laughs> One of the reasons we are told is that this is a Pink Sunday, is a Joy Sunday, is that during Advent we have been subdued. We, we've been uh, not morose. We haven't been um, sad, but it's just been a subdued period waiting for Jesus. And so the church fathers and mothers uh, decided to put in the middle of these Sundays a Joy Sunday to remind us of our joy. So uh, that is this Sunday.
From light comes life. Deep in the expectant earth, a seed stretches. Through the fire start of imagination, an idea takes root. In a passionate flash, love glows with infant intensity. Safe in the womb, a child senses its season turn and stirs. It is Advent, something coming, vulnerable in its unstoppable desire. God, unquenchable life, may they grow the seed, the love, the idea, the child. Let us pray. Uncontainable, irrepressible, bubbling up in explosion of energy. What the weary long for, what our children often embody, what makes the divine smile, joy. It cannot be paid for, but is a priceless treasure. As we hope for your arrival, as we pray for peace in your living, as we wait and watch and wonder how you might reveal yourself to us, God give us the joy in your advent. Joy is not a commodity that can be bought or sold, but lives deep in the human spirit. Help us to hear that truth and believe it. Let go of what our consumer culture says will bring us happiness, money, success, a scramble to the top that leaves us flat. If we have robbed others of what they need in our clamor and quest for more than our fair share, forgive us. Help us hear the call of John the Baptist to turn around and begin again. God of love, we were made in joy. May we live that way. We light, we light a, a candle, candle for joy. May it light the way. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray. of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the preaching of John, that rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Zephaniah. The prophet Zephaniah's message is mostly one of judgment for sin. This reading, however, which comes from the conclusion of the book, prophesies joy for Judah and Jerusalem. Judgment has led to repentance, and God's salvation is at hand. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart. 
O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall, not fear, you shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing, <clears throat> as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the people of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm responsibly. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The second reading is taken from the book of Philippians. Despite being in prison, Paul is remarkably upbeat as he writes this letter. Here, he urges his friends in Philippi to trust God with all their worries and concerns with the hope that they will experience God's joy and peace. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Thanks. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. John the Baptist heralds the Mighty One who is coming. John teaches that preparation for God's reign is not a matter of identity, but of bearing fruits of merciful justice, radical generosity, and vocational integrity. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds ask him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. 
John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. We do not hear Jesus saying, do as I do. We hear Jesus saying, be as I am. That is the fruit of repentance. And that is the Advent theme of this Sunday, the fruit of repentance. The fruit of repentance that is turning ourselves from sin to joy. To turning ourselves from sin to Christ is joy. The joy of having Christ within us, within our soul, within our heart, is the fruit of repentance. In our gospel for today, we hear John the Baptist tell us what having the joy of Christ within us is like. Whoever has two coats, share with someone who has none. Whoever has food, share with someone who does not have food. In other words, the joy of Christ enables us, actually compels us to reach out from ourselves to others. When you think about it, can we think of a time Jesus was self-serving? So to be like Jesus, to be Christ-like, which we have heard since our baptism, is to push aside who we are and to be who Christ is. And we know to be like Jesus, to be Christ-like, is a constant effort. It is never-ending process. We aren't just baptized and we become Christ-like. Yes, Christ is within us. But as an author, Marlena Graves, addresses in one of her writings, citing our Christian credentials or background or church attendance does not a Christian make. We have to practice daily conversation to Christ, to practice repentance, and then to commit to whether whatever we can reasonably do to make things right through Christ in our lives, in our institutions, in our relationships. Repentance is not easy, Graves writes. The fruit of repentance or turning from sin to Christ is living out Christ's love. So how is it that we, you and I, how can we be Christ in our day and time? As we just heard, it is not easy. Alexander Sosanistan wrote, if only it were so simple, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds, and it were necessarily only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them but that's not the way it is. The line dividing good and evil, he writes, cuts through the heart of every human being. None of us can claim truthfully to be all wheat and no chaff. So we are really where the crowds are after John the Baptist told them to bear fruits worthy of repentance. What then should we do? We know that there's more to the bearing of fruit of repentance than sharing a coat or sharing food. What then should we do is a constant. How shall we be? Who shall we be? We should be who we are, who God made us to be here on this earth. Each of us is different. 
yet we are followers of Christ, which makes us more than we are. Through our baptism, we have Christ within us. Through Christ, we bear the fruits of repentance. Through us, Christ reaches out beyond us. Christ uses us to bring his love, his forgiveness, his caring to others. What then should we do, the crowd asked. It is not you nor I who does anything. It is Christ through us who is the doer, the giver, the comforter. It is Christ through us who is kind, who reaches out, who listens. It is Christ through us who reaches out and brings to others love and who shows compassion. But we ask, how does this happen? How can we be Christ in our midst? Well, we have heard the answer all too often. In fact, we heard it this morning. Pray without ceasing. That's how it happens. That's how we are Christ within our midst. Christ yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Christ leads us to reach out beyond ourselves. Christ leads us to love where we probably would not. Christ leads us to give where we probably would not have. Through Christ, we are more than who we are. Through Christ, we are greater than who we are. Through Christ, we are Christ within our world.
confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This morning in our prayers, we lift up Jerry Larson and the family and friends of Kathy Marcheski, who passed away this weekend. We also keep in prayer those impacted by the tornadoes and storms across the Midwest this weekend. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, renew your church and raise up leaders who announce your good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide the work of candidacy and call committees. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day especially those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing, God, you exult over us in singing. Enliven the song of this assembly and bless the ministry of church musicians. With instruments and dance, join our voices to the song of all creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Please join me in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran Church, help us to use our many blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for your servants who showed us your goodness and grace. By the power of your spirit, keep us steadfast in faith until we make our home with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for everyone to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is life. Christ is living. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Lord all praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to Christ's banquet, feast on God's gift of grace. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you.
let us pray. God, for whom we wait in this meal, you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. So if Scott will come forward, and if Carrie will come forward. We're honoring Carrie on two accomplishments. One is she finished her deaconess program, completely graduated. And she also finished her internship here, which we were very thankful for, and continues with us as now our deaconess. So we So we have gotten her this, and she can really tell us what it is. <laughs> it has to do with being a deaconess. It does. These are. <laughs> Um, the center is the Christ symbol with the basin. Um, these are the four images of diaconia. Um, a doorkeeper, light bearer, um, I'm forgetting them now, table server, and um, the last one's escaping me, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll preach about it. Um, <laughs> But these, these images um, we covered in depth in my very first class, the theology of uh, diaconal ministry, and um, this is very precious. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Scott's the president of our congregation, so we're thankful he's with us today so we could give her this gift. Thank you. A reminder, uh, tomorrow we have our congregational meeting at 7 o'clock. 6.30, thank goodness. Yay! Yay! So we're move, trying to move things up. So yes, it's at 6.30 tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, poinsettia orders. We're reminded to please have your orders of poinsettias. It was due Friday, but I think she's extended it uh, through tomorrow. So the form is in your bulletin, so please order poinsettias if, if you would like. Our Christmas Eve service is at 7 at and uh, 10 on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day service is at 10 a.m. So Christmas Eve is at 7 and at 10, it usually is at 11, but we're having it at 10, 7 and 10 on Christmas Eve and at 10 o'clock on Christmas Day. Please stand. The God of hope fill us with joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, whom we wait. Amen. Amen.
in peace, Christ is near.